Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here, and in this lesson, this is a user requested video. So for folks who have been commenting below, this was something you've been asking about and a sort of build script to compile on different platforms. That is to have some sort of cross-platform build. So I'm going to show you just a simple shell script that you can run on the terminal as that's how I've taught how to build SDL2. So feel free to enhance this or take it uh, further as you like. Now I'm not going to jump into make systems or CMake. That might be something, again, folks want more of. So be sure to comment below if you want to see more SDL2 videos related to uh, build systems and working with some other tools like make, CMake, and so on. So with that said, though, let's go ahead and jump into the lesson and show you what I've got for you. So in this lesson here, I've just built a shell script. So you can tell by looking at the top here at line one, let me make this nice and big for you folks, that we are using just a simple bash script here. So you don't have to be an expert in bash. In fact, you can look at this. If you've never written a shell script before, that's okay. Um, it's just a simple scripting language that's essentially reading each of these commands line by line and creating a few variables. Now, our goal here is just to be able to easily compile on Mac, Windows, or Linux, and for folks trying to support all those platforms or maybe other ones like Android, which there will eventually be a lesson on uh, as well, we can just simply have the command line here. So some things that we might want to toggle when we're building. So what compiler we're using, the version of the C++ language, if it's a debug build, where our source files are, include our output binary, and then any of the libraries that we're using. So we've learned how to use a few optional ones as well, the mixer and TTF library. And these might even be things that we want to consider a sort of uh, optional libs uh, variable here if you want to configure this further. Now, all I'm going to do for this script here that I'm providing and will be in the repo in the description below is just detect what operating system that I'm building on. So if I'm building on a Linux machine, any of the types of Linuxes, then we'll just use these defaults that I've provided here. Otherwise, if we're on Mac, which is usually detected as Darwin, if you're doing some sort of operation uh, or OS type uh, lookup in the bash shell scripting language, look up it with uh, Darwin and then maybe some other stuff here. That's what the asterisk is after the quotes here. Then we're looking in our include uh, file just as before, but also the frameworks folder. Remember, Mac does tend to like to package things up and put them in this library frameworks format, which is actually kind of nice because then everything's all together. So then we're also going to have to update our libs here and install all the libraries or SDL2 in the frameworks folder. Now, of course, if you're using some of these other libraries here, like TTF, SDL Mixer, you would also add those frameworks here below. And then finally, for Windows, I've got set up here for the MySys builds, all of our linking options here. All of our libraries are in the same location for our install, so I don't have to make any changes there, at least on my setup. Now, on your machines, you might have to make some configuration, or for some reason this isn't working, I'll keep this script up to date, so feel free to do a pull request on the repo, and I'll take a look at that if there is something uh, wrong in my script. But otherwise, the takeaway here is just that I want you to be able to see how to easily be able to do multiple builds. So again, we're pulling from the same source directory, all of our header file, all the code that we're creating from scratch is in the same location. Our libraries have and include paths depending on which operating system that you're using. That's what needs to be updated. So that's what this script has. And finally, what I do is I have one compile uh, line here which combines everything together. I'll move out of the way so that you can see it all in one line here and I'm simply just concatenating all these options together. And then I finally echo out the compile string here and then I evaluate it so that it treats this as a command. In other words, uh, so let's just go ahead and run this here. You'll see uh, that this is actually uh, running here. Now a few things to note. When I run the script, I can explicitly do sh build.sh, as I've been doing in many of the videos. Uh, but what I'll really want to do is give execute permissions to this script here. So this will give all of our users on our machine execute permissions. So then I can simply run it as dot slash uh, build.sh. And then you also won't see any of these errors here because it's reading in that very first command telling us to treat it as a bash script. 
uh, and not giving us any of these weird sort of errors here saying not found here. So from now on, we'll just be able to run with dot slash uh, build dot sh. Um, however, you might need to change the permissions here for your build script to make sure that it can execute on your operating system. This is going to be more important, likely, for Mac uh, and Linux folks, uh, as well as maybe the Windows folks if you're using uh, MinGW here. Okay, and then the output of my script, I always like to output the command uh, that is being uh, run here so you can see very explicitly all the different files here. Uh, so these are being expanded out from our source directory here, which is kind of cool. So again, you can see all the work that's being done here. Now, again, the point of having this sort of script here, which I'll just go ahead and bring up again, is so you can have consistent builds. So I don't have to remember, did I mistype something? Did I not include some library? Did I use the right version of C++, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the advantage of scripting this out. Now, some of you are probably going to ask, is this optimal? Why am I not using a system like Make? Well, for a small project, this is fine here. But eventually, if our project grows big enough, and I might just, again, want to do a video on it anyway, we might want to put this in a more intelligent build system, like Make, for example. Make itself will only recompile files that we've made changes to, so that'll speed up our builds. And having a faster iteration process gives us more creative time to do coding rather than sit around and wait for our program to compile. So that's the main idea. So I hope this was hopeful, folks. I know some folks have been asking for it for a little while, so I just wanted to create something to kickstart you and just, again, show you if you're trying to build your project on multiple platforms. This is a really low-hanging fruit way to do it, just in a simple shell script. I often also do this with Python. Uh, if folks would like, I can also provide a Python script as well that essentially does the same thing, uh, just providing builds on different platforms. And again, you can go wild with this and build on top of it if you want to have different options or detecting what platform you're on or adding in optimizations or asking the user how they want to compile the software. Any of those things might be fine and feel free to build off of this. The idea again though, having a consistent build system is going to help you make sure that you can compile your programs quickly without thinking about it and consistently. And then of course, other build systems like Make, or meta build systems like CMake will further expand your build capabilities. All right, folks, so I hope this was useful for you. If not for the fact that you just know now that I am listening to the comments, I do read them, and I do certainly take into consideration uh, different requests that users that are part of this community make. So make sure to like, subscribe, and of course, comment below on what you'd like to see next. Thanks for your time, folks.